So hello everyone, I am Martin Brennan, Product Manager of Imagineer Systems, and we're going to take you through a few examples inside Mocha Pro 4. I'm just going to load up our first track here that we're going to work with, so you can see exactly how Mocha Pro works. So Mocha Pro is a tr planar tracker. It tracks areas of textures and scenes to make it really, really accurate for tracking objects into shots. So in an example like this, where we've got a very nasty explosion here, there's a lot of debris and lighting changes going on in the shot, what we want to do is be able to track the side of this car without any of that information interfering with our track. And so we can do this quite simply by coming in here and drawing a shape on the side of our car, and then turning on our grid to see how our track is going to go, and then simply come down to perspective track, and start tracking. And even though there's a lot of lighting changes going on here and there's motion blur and lots of stuff coming through our track, it's gonna lock on really, really solidly because it's a planar tracker, not a point tracker. So once we have this tracking information, we can still manipulate it after we're done and it will still lock on correctly and we don't need to retrack that information. So I can go here and insert a clip such as a logo and then we can start to warp that around move it into place, like so, and then we can start tracking just exactly like that. So once we've got our information, we can start to export this information out to various applications. So I'm going to stop my track here, I'm going to set this back to none, now let's go back to the first frame and set our surface, and then I'm just going to export that data out to another application. So I'm just going to zoom in here and we can see what Mocha Pro exports out to. We can export out to After Effects, many flame systems, Nuke, Quantel systems as well, it also Boris and also Fusion. I'm going to start out with an After Effects track, so I'm just going to select After Effects corner pin and choose copy to the clipboard. Then we're going to zoom out here and switch over to After Effects. So we're going to load up a new project here with our footage intact. I'm not going to save this file here. So here we have our same car that we tracked inside Mocha. Now you can see here that we want to stick this logo onto the side of the car. And the way we do that is we select our layer, come up to edit and paste, and now that tracking data is going to be assigned to the side of that car and include that motion blur on top as well. So this is a very, very quick workflow. You track inside Mocha, you copy to the clipboard, and then you paste into the application you need. So let's show another example using a face. So I'm gonna come and load a different project here. Let's just open it up. We'll come into here and I'm going to load this secondary track here. So here we have a face that we want to track in Mocha. And we don't have a lot of detail in this face to track. But because Mocha is a planar tracker, it can track the texture on the side of her face quite easily. So I'm just going to draw a basic shape on the side of her face. We're going to turn on our grid so we can see how that track's going. And then I'm just going to turn on perspective and start tracking the face. So even though there's not a lot of texture detail to work with, Mocha is able to capture that data because the planar track understands how that skin texture is moving over time. We can still adjust that track as we go and it will still work because we don't need to retrack that plane once it's been tracked. We can then go ahead and insert information in there if we need to. We can insert a logo, come in here and adjust the opacity on that. But if we want to do something more complicated, like attach rotor shapes, it's very, very quick to do inside Mocha. So I'm just going to turn off my insert here, and let's link up a new rotor shape. I'm going to turn off my tracking data, and let's just draw a new shape here. I'm going to draw down the side of her face with a much more refined rotor. Let's just get the curve around the edge of her face here. I'm just going to smooth that out. I'm going to add an additional shape just to get this little dark spot on her cheek here. And then once we have this tracking information, we can attach it back to the original track and then it will lock onto the face as well. So once we have that face shape, we can then go ahead and export that shape data out to do some additional work. So here, I'm gonna come down to export shape data. And in this case, I'm going to export out to Adobe Premiere. I could export out to things like Flame and Nuke and After Effects and Final Cut, but here I'm gonna start with Adobe Premiere. I'm gonna copy those shapes to the clipboard Let's go over to Premiere Pro, and we've got our same shot set up here. So I'm going to select the layer. We're just going to come over like we did in After Effects, right click and paste. 
And now when we come down to our opacity, we can see that mask has been applied into her face and it's there along the entire timeline for the plane of her face. So we can now go and apply video effects to the side of this to help finish up the job. So I'm gonna come down to my video effects inside Premiere. We're gonna select a blur and do a fast blur here. Let's come down here to the bottom and just adjust the blur on the side of her face just to smooth out that skin. And we're just gonna soften the edge of that mask to make sure that we get a nice edge on that shot. So now when we scrub through the shot, you can see that blur is being applied to the mask, but not anywhere else for that face. So if I can scroll up the top, we can turn off our mask and we can see that blur is applied to the whole shape. But if we turn on our mask, it's now applying just to the corner of her face and that area that we did in the middle. So we can also do this for things like makeup effects. So if I come back to the beginning of my shot, let's go back over to Mocha Pro. I'm gonna turn on a different frame here to select the lips here. So we've just tracked the lips in this shot. That's the wrong one. So we've got the lips tracked in this particular example. And what we can do now is just export that shape data out again to something like Adobe Premiere, copy it to the clipboard, come back over to Premiere, and we'll just select a new layer, paste in that data, and now that mask is applied to her lips as well. And we can go ahead and do a simple color correction on that. And now that's applied through the entire shot. So we'll just drag back through there and we can see that the lip color is now applied just with a simple mask shape from Mocha. So we can see here we turn on that mask, see that mask shape that's been applied for that shot. So Mocha is not just a tracker or a roto, it's also a powerful remove tool. I'm gonna to come to a new project I'm going to load up a new comp here. So in this shot, what we have is a stuntman running through our shot. And the stuntman needs to be removed so we can replace him with a new actor. So the way we do this is we just do a simple garbage mask around the edge of the person. It doesn't have to be that accurate. It just has to be a rough shape around his body. We've also done another mask in the background and tracked how that background is moving. And the reason we can do this so accurately is because this foreground mask is occluding the stuntman from our background and ignoring it in the shot. So because we can track the background and the foreground, we're able to do some fun stuff in something called the remove tool. I'm gonna to select my foreground mat and we'll just turn off the mask here so we can see this a little bit easier. And I'm gonna come over to the remove tool in Mocha Pro. Then we can just click render and it's gonna analyze this shot and just take him out. So it's a very powerful tool to be able to clean things out of shots when you don't need them anymore. So things like cameramen who are in reflections, things like wire removals when you've got to pull people up who are flying around the room, even things like microphones on lapels. It's really, really useful to just draw a shape around that area, then use that background information to remove those objects out of the shot. So here's the original with our stuntman running through the shot. And then there's the remove tool cleaning it out completely. So if you don't have enough usable background, you can actually bring in your own clean plates as well. But Mocha has a powerful tool called the Illumination Model, which lets you work out how your clean plate has moved throughout the shot and then applies the lighting back into the shot correctly. So even if you've just won one clean plate in your shot, Mocha has the power to be able to adjust the lighting and fix it in that shot. But in shots like this, where there's enough background to work with, you don't even need to do that. It's all automated with that remove tool. So Mocha is also able to take these shapes and do things with camera solves. So I'm gonna to go to a new shot now. Let's just load up a file here. Don't save that one. Okay, so in this example, what we have is a fairly large pan. And we wanna generate a 3D model that we can sit on top of this table to add to the effect. So what I've done here is I've just tracked this back wall using our planar tracker as we showed before. And we've also tracked the tabletop as well using that tracker. Once we've actually got these two planar tracks, we can just select two layers, the back wall and the tabletop, and we can go ahead to the camera solver now and actually solve a camera for these selected layers. So I'm gonna tell it the type of camera it is, just click solve, and it takes a couple of seconds to solve that camera. And then we can export that camera data out to a couple of applications here. So we've got After Effects 3D motion data, which we can just copy to the clipboard, or we've got FBX data that exports out to pretty much everything else, such as Nuke, Maya, Cinema 4D, and so on. So I'm gonna choose After Effects to start with. Let's just copy that to the clipboard. I'm gonna come back over to AE and load a different project. 
So here we are in that same project inside After Effects. And what we're going to do now is just come up to Edit and do Paste Mocha Camera. And this brings in our 3D camera data. It generates 3D nulls that pan with the camera image. And if we look at our custom view in After Effects, we can see that camera rotating around our scene. So this means now that we've got 3D nulls and a camera, and we can align 3D models to those nulls to actually make them match the scene. So I'm going to come back to the active camera and just turn on some models I've already inserted earlier. And here's a 3D Boris effect that we've done in here. It's just a BCC text effect, and that matches that camera pan with our footage. So I'm going to show you a different example using Nuke now. So we come over to Nuke, I'm going to load it up. So we're just loading up Nuke here. And I'm going to load a piece of footage here that has this same project involved. So we've got our camera node, and we're just going to load in a camera rig here using Mocha Import Plus. I'm going to load a full camera rig and load in the FBX data exported from Mocha. We can then see that projection inside Nuke here with these 3D nulls. And if we go to the 3D view, we can just zoom out and we can see the projected nulls with that camera. So we've got our tabletop nulls down here and we've got the back wall as well. And here's the camera panning around those nulls. So now what we all need to do is align a model to our tabletop area. So I'm just going to link that in. We'll go back to our 3D view so we can see that. So we just plonk a model on top of our nulls and make sure they're sitting in the same orientation. And then this model will now match that camera pan in our shot. So I'm going to go back to the 2D mode so we can see that. And here's the pan with those 2D tracks converted to a camera. So it's that process of taking a planar track out of Mocha, converting it to a camera, and then bringing it into whatever application you need, in this case, Nuke. So I'm going to go now and show you how the lens module works. I'm going to load up a new project here. So when you're working with lenses inside Mocha Pro, you want to be able to adjust with that distortion that's happening in shot. So I'm going to come to the end of this shot here, where we can see this barrel distortion going on in our footage. And this is quite common with your standard anamorphic lenses, or even when you're doing secondary shoots with things like GoPros, you've got a horrific distortion in your shot that you need to either get rid of or work with. So I'm going to start with that. Let's go and to our lens module in Mocha Pro and just locate the lines. And what we give Mocha is some guidelines to work with. And I'm telling Mocha here, I want these lines in my shot to be straight. So calibrate the lens based off those. If you don't have straight lines in your shot, which is actually quite common if you're shooting in a forest or a close-up of someone's face, there's a lot of organic lines which don't have any straight lines. You can just import a separate clip that's been shot with the same lens, such as a calibration grid, or just point the camera at a wall and use that clip to calibrate the current clip you're working with. But here, I've got a nice piece of footage, so I don't need to do that. So I'm going to just go and select a single parameter, calib calibrate that, and this works out the lens distortion for that shot. So then we can choose to either render that flat, but when you render that flat, what you're doing is losing information in your shot. And you don't really want to do that in a lot of situations. So what you can do instead is keep the distortion and actually track with that data. So I can draw my new tracking shape and then define my surface based on that lens. So we can see if we drag our surface out, how it's curving with that lens now, and we can align this correctly to the curve of this screen just like so, and then we can track the plane with that track, uh, lens distortion as well. If you need to get that lens distortion out to another application, you've got a few options here as well. We can use a distortion map, and this generates a rendered UV map that can go out to things like Nuke, Fusion, or Flame to actually work out the warp from a uh, procedural map from Mocha. Alternatively, if you're using something like After Effects, we have a Lens Effect plugin that you can bring into After Effects, and that will do the same thing. It'll make a, loss, a non-lossy distortion that you can distort and then reapply the distortion later if you need to. So I'm going to go back to that uh, Remove, just so we can see that again. I'm going to come back into our Remove tool, just for the people that haven't seen it before. So in Mocha, you can do also uh, removes. In this particular shot, what we've got here is a stuntman that we want to get rid of in our shot. And so what we've done is we've done a simple garbage mask around his body. Let's just turn on the track mats here. 
So we've tracked him through the shot using our planar tracker, and we've done a simple garbage mask around his body. We've also then done the background and tracked that as well. And because we've got a foreground mat, the background is ignoring that foreground object while we're tracking it. So we can get a nice accurate track of that background. So once we have these two objects, a foreground object and a background, we can remove this guy from the shot. So I'm gonna to come to the end of my timeline. I'm just gonna turn off my masks. So we've got our guy sitting in the shot here, and I'm gonna to go to my remove tool and just start rendering. And it's gonna analyze this shot and take him out. So it's a very, very powerful technique because it means that you can clean up shots really, really quickly when you need to get stuff out of there, such as cameramen, rig removal, doing mic removal and things like that, even doing head removal for CG replacement and so on and so forth. And the important thing is, is that when it does this removal work, it's calculating how the lighting has changed as well so that you're not getting any weird patching into your shot. So this is a very, very powerful technique. It saves you hours of work having to go into Photoshop and paint out things and then track patches back in. It just paints these things out immediately. So we can go back to the original to see how that worked. There's the original, and then there's the final remove. And that's all been autom automated inside Mocha Pro. So finally, I'm just gonna quickly show you the stereo tools inside Mocha. I'm gonna open up a new project here. So in Mocha Pro 4, it was a lot of requests to add the ability to also track this stuff in stereo. So what we can do now is we have here a stereo shot, just left and right, and we can just track one of those views and that data can automatically be applied to the other view. So I'm just gonna define my surface here. I'm gonna tell it to track both views at the same time. And now what it's doing is it looks like it's just tracking one view, but it's actually applying that tracking data immediately to the other view as well. So it's a very, very fast workflow. You only need to track one view and then it's automatically retracking in stereo without you needing to do additional work. If you want to see how that step track is going, you can actually turn on a difference mode to see how that stereo offset is being handled. And then we can go in here and actually adjust that offset if we need to inside Mocha Pro. And these stereo tools are across the whole modules. You can remove in stereo, you can do camera solves in stereo, and if you don't need stereo, you can just work in mono mode as well, but there's both modes there to work with to give you that flexibility. So that's been Mocha Pro. This is the advanced modules inside Mocha. We have three different tiers of Mocha. We have Mocha AE, that's bundled with After Effects. That's a free version bundled with After Effects, and that only works when tracking and roto. And then we have Mocha Pro, which does a whole lot more. The Remove tool, the Lens tool, and many, many different more. And you can upgrade from the After Effects version to the Pro version for about half price of the full version. If you need to know sales things, please talk to our sales guy, Ross, right here. Or, and get your badger scan too because we're going to be giving away a copy of this at the end of the show. So that's been Mocha Pro. I'm going to switch over to the customer reel now so you can see what our customers have been doing. But otherwise, come up and see us if you've got any questions. Switch over.